I'm here on location with Marcus Nash at Legends Gym. Now, Marcus, you own Legends. How long have you owned Legends for? Well, I've known owned the name for about two years. Uh, we've been at this specific location for about a year or so. Yeah. Now, this is a performance training gym. There are, there are, there are many different ways of training, and this is what we want to introduce. Today is uh, there's strength training. There's uh, training for aesthetics or bodybuilding style training. There's performance training. There's sports specific training, agility training. There's all different kinds of training. Now, your specialization is, or the one that you love to do the most? I love to do performance training, sports yeah. specific, uh, combine training. Uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's talk about what the differences are. What distinguishes that as performance training? Well, performance training as opposed to like aesthetics or just regular strength training, uh, you're just training for a specific for a specific sport, for a specific uh, an event. It might be, you know, swimming, it might be a marathon, it might be a triathlon, it might be the 40-yard dash, it might be the vertical. So uh, it's basically enhancing whatever sport or event that you're going to perform. In. So you're working on like speed, reaction time. It's not necessarily, the goal is not, the primary goal, primary goal is not necessarily to change how your body looks. Not necessarily. I mean, through strength training and the actual training, your body will change a little bit. But we're this is geared more towards, uh, like we said before, that specific performance, that specific thing that you're actually doing. Okay. Now the reality is, is that when you, I mean, you look at football players, you look at fighters, you look at track athletes. I mean, they've got amazing physiques, right? right. And so. Is there a possibility to use elements of performance training that are going to obviously give you, and we're talking now for the average guy that maybe right. just wants to be a little bit quicker or right. something like that, but he wants to be in better shape, but a functional type shape. Is this something, do you have something you can morph into that? Can you use that performance training for that? Well, definitely. You can, you know, put bits and pieces of everything with the, you know, as far as like, you know, what we do in, in a football practice or a football off season or a boxing off season or whatever that you can put bits and pieces of that specific. Um, exercises into regular training um, it's just a matter of of actually getting to what you what you want it to get now you got to think about all these athletes they've been doing it for years so right. the way the bodies that they have it's been structured for 10 15 20 years uh, back through high school and college so uh, you don't necessarily want to associate the type of bodies that they actually have in their specific sport to what you want what you want to get to gotcha. so like you really have to be careful in, in in really choosing exactly the type of look that you want uh the type of performance that you want and and, and associated with what you're actually doing okay now marcus you played professional football you've got two super bowl rings one with denver one with baltimore right yes and you played uh professional football for over 10 years yes okay and then there was college ball before that in yes. high school so Absolutely. all told you've been playing football for the majority of your life pretty pretty long time so okay four years of <laughs> college you know four years i mean football since you were in the sixth grade or whatever that is so you've been i've been playing football for a long time okay and so now after that your focus became uh, the training side of it right you've got you've been certified in a number of different um, you know disciplines and, right. and like that so what made you choose performance tra obviously you you had a lot to do with it yourself you've also done at the gym here we see a lot of competitive athletes a lot of models train here as well uh, how do you morph what you know about performance training into into that well actually when I first started doing the training I was actually playing football myself and so I couldn't at the at the time I was in between like the specific teams and I just get wanted to get a little bit more um, I wanted a little bit more so I actually started researching and training myself and I got certified and then I actually um, the training that I did, yeah. I kind of did the research behind it and trying to get my body ready for a specific year. So in football, it might, you know, I might have wanted to be heavier and faster or lighter and quicker, but it all depends on what I want, how I wanted to perform. So you that manage specific. that yourself. Typically, yeah. you've got a trainer, right, on the but, team? Well, yeah. Typically, you have a trainer for the team, which is, you know. I played in Denver. I, I did the off season in Denver. I did the off season in Baltimore. But actually, what a lot of players do, they go and they get their own specific training elsewhere. So what I did was I kind of, you know, the specific training that we were doing, I just needed a little bit more, especially when I started playing in NFL and the AFL. 
um, I started training myself a little bit more. So it nice. was, so I kind of implemented certain things, injury prevention, all that kind of stuff with myself and how I performed that specific year. And then I am, you know, and then as I got older and I retired, then I kind of put, you know, put it all together and I kind of dumbed it down a little bit for my, my girls and, and the people that I, you know, <laughs> dumbed, it did, down. dumbed it down. They're going to be happy bit. to hear that. I know. I know. You, boy, you know, I don't even want to get into that. But um, you made I, their camera woman laugh. <laughs> but I, I kind of had to scale it down yeah. to where the actual non-athletes and the people that weren't used to my different movements. And, and I think that's a really important point and something we'll talk a lot more about later is, uh, you know, what you do or what you did as a professional ball player is is it, a lot of the principles can apply but you have to as you say scale it down to the individual's fitness level ability Definitely. and like that but but a lot of the principles remain the same right all, all the principles remain the same yeah the technique um, the, the type of programs you just have to pick the different exercises that bed suits it and what we're gonna do then uh, and you're gonna see in the coming weeks and months uh, we'll be doing some uh, podcasts on uh, on the the workout on fit uh, fit life talk radio We'll also be doing some workouts together. Marcus is going to be running me through some stuff. We're going to uh, follow him through some of his stuff. We're going to learn as much as we can from this guy because it is a really unique combination. Most athletes that I've dealt with in my life, and I've trained many professional hockey players, baseball players, many, many pro athletes, uh, f competitive physique athletes, uh, a lot of them may look good, they may perform well, but they don't necessarily have that knowledge. So to have the knowledge and the experience of, of being a competitive athlete is, uh, is really, really important. Yep. So this is Marcus. Get used to that pretty face in this building. We'll be in here a lot, doing a lot of stuff, man. Look forward to it.